The hatred with which the villagers of Kalafo abused the name of Ethiopia's leader, Colonel Mengistu, as we arrived in this market square, seemed to underline that the Ethiopians are unlikely ever to govern here again. Away from the square, the symbolic lion of Ethiopia with teeth of spent cartridges is now surmounted by a liberation soldier. In our 500-mile tour of the Ogaden, we saw no sign of an Ethiopian presence, just the aftermath of their leaving. The key to the Ethiopian collapse in the Ogaden lay here at Gode, 120 miles from the Somali border. It was, amid the poverty of the region, a palatial airbase with a runway big enough to land a jumbo. Its American-made anti-aircraft guns are now manned by men from the Liberation Front. The Ethiopians didn't make much of a fight for it. They left a feast of unused American-supplied rockets and bombs, and beyond, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of weapons and ammunition. The American sign of friendship underlined the source. For though that bond of alliance has now been broken by the Ethiopians, there was no sign here that the new Soviet replacements had started to get through when Godi fell six weeks ago. But pride of place for the Liberation Forces here was not the airbase, but what was once Haile Selassie's provincial palace. Now riddled with bullet holes, only the old man's effigy in cast iron survives intact. On the way from Godi, an Ethiopian civil airliner brought down by rebel gunfire two months before the August victories. Suspected by the Liberation Forces of being a troop carrier, the telltale state of the planes inside revealed that Ethiopia had indeed used her civil airline to ferry troops. Between each garrison town there are virtually no roads. There is in fact little sign of Ethiopian investment beyond the vast military expenditure that was needed to maintain their hold on the Ogaden. The burnt-out shell of an American-supplied Ethiopian tank here at Kebridaha and three charred bodies inside bear witness to more of a fight here in what was the Ethiopian Army's Ogaden Divisional Headquarters. Once again, the ammunition and plenty of hardware still intact. But around the hilltops, more devastation. The aftermath of a battle in which the now Soviet-backed Ethiopians had to use old American-supplied weapons against a liberation movement now no longer supported by the Russians, but still armed by them. And beyond the debris and the barbed wire, the nomadic peoples around whom it is all being fought. Amid the giant anthills, we came across them with their camels and flocks, some of the remotest people in Africa. But even here, the shepherds police their flocks with guns. Even here, they know about the war and feel about it too. For when I asked who they would prefer to govern their country, it was Somalia. And once more, the almost inevitable, down with Mengistu. At the next town of Galadi, under massive guard, 200 Ethiopian soldiers captured in the fighting there. Unhappy, disillusioned faces. There were many who, when they joined the army in Addis Ababa, can have had little idea that this would be how it would end. For thousands of their colleagues have now died, or like them, been captured in Ethiopia's wars, both here and in Eritrea to the north. <coughs> Around the cooking cauldrons, a handful of Ethiopia's peasant militia. The 300,000 force of villagers raised in a desperate bid to reverse the war's trend. It is to the north of here that the running battle is now being fought. All accounts we heard were of the bloodiest fighting with appalling casualties and devastation. And now the Ethiopian offensive, designed with Vietnam-style airlifts of Soviet weaponry to win back at least some of the ground lost to the Somalis. This was as far as we were allowed to go, so that the precise position at the front is far from clear. But whatever the picture at the front, it does seem that in the Ogaden itself, the Somalis are here to stay. And what that does to Russian designs in the Horn of Africa is unclear. What is certain is that so long as the fighting continues in this strategic corner of Africa, this must remain one of the world's potential flashpoints.